video number six and it's finally time to specify the statistical analysis we're going to apply to all those images we processed across those five participants so this is the first of the statistical steps um, we'll get to see the results in a few videos time but first a reminder of the study the data we're actually going to analyze were images acquired while people looked at faces scrambled objects scenes and objects there was also a blank screen baseline condition you can see the order there with a blank every so often and then those four conditions randomized in between a total of 21 uh, conditions every 16 seconds so the onset say for the faces are at 16 seconds 96 192 and 304 seconds easy to work out the onset times of the other conditions it's, it's given uh, here and this is a quick reminder of what some of the stimuli looked like if the uh, faces or the objects just flashing up quite quickly over the period of 16 seconds let's do a quick reminder of the model we're fitting we're fitting a square wave or, or boxcar model to the data um, but it's convolved with uh, the human response uh, function so it's actually the gold one we're trying to fit blimey this is going fast so we can adjust the constant and the beta to find the best fit model to the data the best fit being defined by the beta and constant which gives the minimum residuals bearing that in mind it's time to start specifying the stats we've now got a nice set of smooth warped images for each of the five participants so we're ready to do the statistical analysis which will involve looking at each of the voxels in uh, time series over the 113 or so images so look at 113 intensity values for each voxel and see if that intensity varies in a way that's related to the change in the conditions these are the voxels we're going to be looking at all super blurry because they've been smooth so even if we zoom in quite a lot on those um, these these are the individual voxels let me just pop them into voxel space so we get a better look um, super smooth but there's one voxel and we will look at the the time course the 113 values of that over 300 or so seconds to see how that varies okay so to do that we're going to look at the SPM menu and where it says specify first level we're going to click on that first level is always the stats you do on the images second level stats tend to be those you do on the results of the first level stats so we'll click on the first specify first level and up comes the batch editor immediately asking us to uh, with an fMRI model spec because remember when we started SPM we said SPM fMRI so it started up with fMRI defaults this, this is going to get quite complicated so it's important to take time uh, to make sure you understand all the values going in and we'll save it as we go and it's important important no, it's essential not to make any mistakes at all first few things are quite easy first it's directory it wants to know where to put all the stats output and do you know what we're going to do we're actually going to make one because we're doing statistics involving all five participants we won't put the statistics in any one participants directory so what I'll do is I'll just create a new folder which I'll call maybe um, we'll call it group stats like that I tend not to put spaces in file names for historical reasons with SPM but it seems to be okay with them now so we've got a, a folder called group stats which is where we'll put everything so let me go back to my batch uh, editor so I can say the directory I'm going to use is in object, but it's going to be group stats. And the timing parameters are very important. Units for design. Nowadays, this will almost always be seconds. We're going to be specifying when conditions start, when blocks of a, a given type of stimulus start. And we're going to say, does it start at zero seconds, at 22 seconds, at what point? You can specify it in scans, but ours are in fractions of scans because um, our scans are three seconds long, but our blocks are 16 seconds. So it makes usually makes far more sense to specify everything in ter terms of scans. Next option, the interscan interval. This is determined by your EPI images. You should know this. If you don't, 
use a tool to look at your daikon images because the for the mosaics will say inside the metadata the header file what the tr is the repetition time but for this it's 3000 milliseconds which it always wants in seconds so we just put a three for the moment ignore uh, micro time resolution and micro time onset we'll leave that at default the complicated bit comes now the data and design because we have five different participants and for each of those participants we need to specify some uh, conditions so um, what we'll do is we'll add one um, participant session and set that up correctly then we will replicate it and just change which files are used so that'll make it quicker and easier and there'll be fewer error possibilities so I'm just going to click once where it says new subject slash session we'll get some new fields coming in First, it needs to know what scans we're going to be using. So we'll specify those. We'll start with participant 10, and it'll be everything in the smoothed warped directory. So we select all of those, all 113. There are quite a lot of options here, but we've got to specify conditions. If we go back and remind ourselves about the design of the study, there, there were basically five conditions. There was a blank condition when the screen was grey, and then there were faces, scrambled objects, and places or scenes. We're only going to model four of those because the remainder of the time, after you, any time which isn't those four, is a time when it's a blank screen. And so that will be modelled implicitly. So we're just going to specify a condition. And the name of the condition, the first one we'll do, we will call um, faces and uh, it wants to know onsets and durations we'll tell it the durations in this study every single uh, block of stimuli was 16 seconds long um, and what I'm going to do actually um, is all the conditions are similar apart from when the onsets were so I'm just going to uh, replicate that So now I've got four conditions, all called faces. So the second one I'll change, because that's not faces. I'm going to call that scrambled. We could call it random. And the third one wasn't faces. I'm going to call that objects. And the fourth one, I'm going to call that uh, call it scenes. We could call it places. I'm going to call it places because we talk about the parahippocampal place area, don't we? Not the parahippocampal scene area. So we're at places. Okay. So we've specified those four names and said the durations are all 16 seconds. We have to specify when those uh, actually come on. And we've got to go back and check with our design when all these stimuli uh, come on. So it's essential that we get this next bit right. I do have the data somewhere. I'll just have to squiggle over this bit while I try and find it all. This is a reminder of the uh, stimuli. So the faces were blocks 2, 7, 13, and 20, which in terms of seconds means that onsets 16, 96, 192, and 304. So what I'll do is I'll hang that off the bottom and I'll go back and try and find the batch editor. I'm just going to shrink it up a bit so I can see it. So for faces, onsets in seconds were at time 16, 96, 192 and 304. For the scrambled, the onsets, one of the scrambled are, these red ones here, these onsets are 32, 128, 176 and 288. There are four blocks of each type. For objects, 
the onsets are 64, 144, 208 and 256. We've now specified the design for, we haven't finished yet, we haven't done places, okay. <laughs> the onset for places or scenes is 48, 112, 224 and 272. That's right, okay. So now we have specified the design for those four conditions for one participant. What remains for that participant to change is the high pass filter, which is set at 128 seconds. Um, what you would normally do is set that to twice the longest time between repetitions of the same stimulus. And in, th in this case, the longest period between repetitions of the same stimulus is between the final two uh, blocks of scrambled, I believe. One that occurs starts at 176 and ends at 288. Is that right? I think that's the, the longest period we've got between repetitions. And so we set the high pass filter to twice that. And I think that's 100 and let's, let me just, if ever your maths escapes you, so that period is 288 minus 176 is 112 seconds so there's 112 seconds between this one coming on and the same one coming on again so we set the high pass filter to twice that and that's 224 seconds the purpose of the high pass filter is um, it actually sets up a number of regressors with very long time periods to look for any variance in the time course that takes place over that very long period of time. Because scanner drift, physiological changes, cause is the intensity of the image changes over time, and we don't want that to be mistaken for a change due to the change in conditions. It co varies out effects over a much longer time period than those we're interested in. So I've now specified the design for just one subject. So what I do is I now replicate that for the five participants. So number two, three, four, and then the fifth one. So we've got now five participants. So the first one is fine. If we go down to the next one and for the scans we don't want it to be participant 010 we right click and unselect those and we go to participant 11 smoothed warped select all done everything else remains the same because the design is identical for all participants next one we want to change it from participant P010 to our third participant, participant 12, and then we do the same for the final two, participant 13, and then participant 14. So that is now set up for all those participants. Crucial thing to do now is click on save. Just call it group stats model spec, something like that. And I now just run that. Um, you immediately see it's produced an spm.mat file. These are very important. We'll learn a lot about those. And if we have a look at what it's doing. You go to it's calculating globals, and in a moment it will come up with the a summary of the design of the study.
which we will have a good look at in just a moment. That's almost it for specifying statistics, but if you take a closer look at the design matrix that flashed up at the end there, you'll notice that it's horribly wrong, and that for each uh, condition there appear to be only two occurrences of the uh, block of stimuli, so only two blocks of faces, when of course there were four, and that's because there's a, a rookie error somewhere in the stat spec. Uh, in case you didn't spot it, there's a little correction coming up in just a moment. Once you have made sure that your units for design are definitely set in seconds and not in scans, because everything you've specified is in seconds, then you can save it and run it. And um, just make sure we've done it all properly. It'll quickly run through all the images and calculate some uh, overall global values and set up the spec. It's important to note it's not actually doing the statistics now. It's not looking at the time course of each voxel and trying to fit all these different models, these regressors to it. It just comes up with a summary of the uh, statistical design, the design matrix, which we'll look at more closely in just a moment.